All right, YouTube, this is another tutorial for the MK7 GTI Golf R. Um, today I'm putting in the bypass valve vent to atmosphere. Um, I've already got the intake out. If you can't remove your own intake, you should probably stop now. Um, the tools on this is really simple, just uh, a 7 millimeter to remove uh, your intake. I think it's a 7 millimeter, I believe. But um, on mine, it's a 7 millimeter because I have an aftermarket intake. And... Um, the bypass valve itself comes off pretty simple. Um, it has this clip right here that just comes off. And then that screw, there's three of them, one over down here, one on that side, and one on the very bottom. And then it just pops out. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that. This isn't really too much of a uh, tutorial on how to remove it, more so as it is to show um, the before and after and my overall experience with the uh, bypass valve. So let me go ahead and remove it and we'll go ahead and uh, show you what it's, uh, the differences on it. All right, so I'm back to show you the uh, bypass valve out, the factory one. And so I figured I'd just throw in a uh, scale um, review of the factory one, which is 8.1 ounces. And that's just the factory one compared to the aftermarket one, which is with both of them, the solenoid and the uh, bypass valve itself, about seven ounces. The bypass valve itself, about four ounces. So it's a big difference in weight. Um, not that it really matters because it's, it's such a minute difference really in the overall car, but um, this thing's pretty heavy compared to the to the forge bypass valve so let me go ahead and go ahead and put the new one in and I'll show you uh, the next step all right so we have the uh, bypass valve fully installed I ended up putting the solenoid up on the firewall I know it's gonna be a little bit loud because of the motor and whatnot because it's on but um there was no problems with the installation. The um, vacuum lines are pretty simple. They're on um, the um, website for um, Forge. And um, this thing sounds pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with it. I haven't since uh, taken it out yet on a test drive to, to see if it's holding boost with the correct spring because there's two different springs. Um, I'll probably end up uh, posting that a little bit later on the forums on my uh, my uh, experience with the different springs um, one of them is a yellow spring one of them is a blue spring and the red spring is for like 30 psi and up um, right now it seems to be that my uh, the tune that new speed has set up on this is um, set up for about 25 uh, psi um, peak so I put in the uh, the what is it yellow spring or the blue spring I'm sorry the blue spring, which is rated from 25, I think, 23 to 25, or 22 to 25, or something like that. Um, and hopefully it'll hold up. But, but um, pretty simple installation. Um, nothing too crazy about it. The vacuum line I did get from um, the ECS um, port or uh, boost tap that I got from right there. And it just runs over in this corner right here and comes all the way to the solenoid. The solenoid then taps off to the turbo, um, or I'm sorry, the uh, bypass valve, which goes right there to the top. And the other side of the solenoid from the um, metal nipple goes to the bottom right there. So, um, the last thing is the uh, the harness, which you can see right there. I zip tied it to the back, and it just goes to the solenoid itself. Like I said, pretty simple installation. Um, I'll give you a quick uh, rev of the car so you can hopefully hear it. I'm gonna turn on the turn down the volume here. And there's no check engine light, by the way. This right here is just. Um, the fault code for my uh, license plate lights, which are a piece of crap. Um, I have to find something that's halfway decent, but. Let's see if 
I can get it a little bit closer. So it looks like it's working pretty cool. Um, I'll try to put up a better review of, of the overall performance. Right now I haven't really, like I said, I haven't driven it, but um, check back in. I'll have another review on a couple other products that are coming in too. And uh, subscribe because there will be a lot more going in this car. And I'll be also giving a breakdown of the goods and bads of what I've experienced so far with this car, which has been quite a bit. Um, especially with some of the aftermarket parts like this like this crappy uh, LED lights that I put in, even with the capacitors. They, that's a whole other story. But anyway, uh, stay, stay tuned. And um, I hope you enjoy. Thank you.